Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Rockman 7 FC. In the last part, we went through a lot more Robot Masters and now it's time for the final one of the main set, Shade Man. Now, I don't show this off in the LP, but the Ghost and Goblins theme easter egg, I believe, is still in the game. I think you need to hold the jump button before you press the start button just about. And then you get an 8-bit version of the Ghosts and Goblins theme that I think might actually literally just be the version from Ghosts and Goblins in this, or maybe it is a slightly different mix, I'm not sure. Uh, the main reason I'm not showing it off is I did that in the main LP, and frankly, I think Shade Man's main song needs more appreciation. This song is really good. Uh, and actually, speaking of which, I should note that even though the stages themselves aren't in the game, the intro stage and mid-stage themes are on the game's website, if memory serves. So either those stages were going to be in at some point, or they just figured they might as well do the entire soundtrack just so that part's complete. So let's get into Shade Man's bio. He used to be an attraction robot for a funhouse. He's currently practicing a new song for karaoke. Good point, he's dandy. Bad point, lazy employees. Likes tomato juice, dislikes garlic toast. Well, Shade Man, you and I would not get along. I should note, the bad point is completely different in the Japanese version is that he won't let go of the mic, so he's a bit of an attention hog, I guess. Okay, weird. So here we get to the mini boss, and this is one of the more interesting mini bosses in the game in that it has two weakness points you can hit. You can either hit the eyes of the big pumpkin or the center pumpkin. And depending on which of those two targets you hit to take out the last of its HP, a completely different route through the rest of Shade Man's stage opens. In order to get every item, you needed to go both ways in the original game. But here in Rockman 7 FC, because of the rule of rush search, we only need to go down to the bottom path, so we need to take out the interior portion. Uh, this does mean we're not going to see certain enemy sprites and a giant portrait of Dr. Wily down the line in this stage, but oh well. The main reason we want to come down here is because this wall here is another false one, and oh, you can see there's a little bit of a boss door there. Um, you might want to heal up if you got the energy tanks and you're low on health. Third time's the charm, brother! Let's fight to see who is stronger. Okay, mini boss, uh, is Proto Man himself. I think you can fight this in any of the three uh, places you can run into him, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Proto Man likes to do a lot of mini jumps while firing various volleys of his shot. In the third jump, he especially does a little curve shot that goes from the bottom up. He can do a couple different shard shots that he can follow up with a smaller one as well. Uh, you need to kind of keep on your feet on this because he can also dash across the floor a little bit. Staying close isn't a b good idea, but you do want to stay maybe about half a stage distance away and not the entire stage distance, just in case. He can do a lot of damage. It's kind of rough. Uh, this fight, I think, is outright harder in the demake here compared to the original, but that's mostly because the sprite sizes were a little easier to judge distances and all that in some regards in the original game. It is interesting to see just what doing to an art sale can change for a game. Like, playing this like it's an NES game makes it feel harder than it did as the Super Nintendo game. So, you're not as weak as I thought. Take my proto-shield with you. It's okay. Yeah, it is okay. Go, and be careful. Also, Proto Man, you still thought we were weak? We've done this shit six times already. So, for visiting him in all three locations now that I think about it, I think you can only actually fight him here, we get his Proto Shield as a quote unquote weapon. It just actively puts the Proto Shield out in front of you when you're actively standing still. When you're running, when you're shooting, when you're jumping, it is not out. It can block projectiles at a standstill. So, for my playstyle, it's not the worst, but uh, there's just better options. It's cool. Uh, and I do like that whenever Proto Man became playable moving forward, he by and large had this shield. And it made sense for that move set. Not so much here for Mega Man, especially in 7. It's still, uh, it's cool that you can get it to begin with, though. I, again, I really like a lot of what Mega Man 7 does. Just in terms of, like, little hidden secrets and all that. It feels like it's the Mega Man game out of the classic games that has the most of that stuff. Barring maybe just going for, like, bolts in Mega Man 8. Because, by and large, they kept the, like, secret searching stuff mostly in the X series, uh, after this point. So them putting all this cute little 
All right, if you can use this weapon here to burn this stuff down and all that. That was only really done in Classic here in 7, and I guess a little bit in and base, but uh, that's a very drastically different thing because of how the CDs work. So if you take the lower path here in Shade Man stage, we actually get a little bit of darkness platforming. Great, my absolute least favorite. Uh, but thankfully, it's literally only that one screen, and you can light it up at your own pace because of its torch wheel there. Scorch wheel, rather. And now we're thrown to an elevator segment with a bunch of zombies. Thunderbolt, here's your best friend, because it takes out each zombie one shot. Again, this ability is really good. Uh, if you take the top path, I might as well mention it. You just go into another large, I think even four-way scrolling room with a bunch of wolf enemies that look a lot like Veligarder from the original Mega Man X. Uh, that's technically the easier pathway, I think, but I think it also might go on a little longer. And another notable difference uh, from the original game into this fan demake. Uh, you ran into base in this stage in the original for a cutscene. Uh, one of several cutscenes with him throughout the game. Uh, we don't see him again until the later portions here in the demake, but he was right here, I think. Uh, but apparently there are sprites for him in this stage's level data, so maybe that cutscene was meant to be in at some point, but they just decided to cut it out, because you could theoretically run into it as soon as you start the game. For now, though, it's time for Shade Man, who's actually seen a little bit of a difficulty increase, uh, in this version. First off, he spends most of the fight in midair, so Wild Coil, in order to hit him with the charge attack, you need to hold up when you, uh, release it, just so it bounces high enough. The main thing he does is float left and right across the screen, dive down at you, and then attack you by sucking your own HP into his. I think there was a limit for how much he could get in the original game, but here he definitely drains it faster, it feels like. Uh, only a few fully charged wild coils are all you need to actively take him out, but you need to be careful because if you're not paying attention, you might lose more health than you have and die or just completely reverse the effects of one of your own wild coils. And for beating him, we do get another pretty interesting weapon. Uh, here we are going to get the Noise Crush. It's a little sonic wave you fire forward, and that's cool on its own, but it can bounce off walls and back into you to charge it for more damage. And I think you can still do the exploit from the original game where you can slide into it to catch it sooner. Base is one of Dr. Wily's robots! He's gone berserk. You have to stop him. Okay, bye. <laughs> and thus we have access to the Wily Castle, but in case you still haven't grabbed all the items from the eight Robo Master stages, you can go back and grab them right now. With that said, let's head right on in. As much as I love a lot of this version of the soundtrack's demixes, so to speak, uh, not a big fan of that one. But I do love how Wily 1 sounds. I love this song, period. Uh, so what I mean earlier, a moment ago, when I say that you can slide into the noise crush to get it charged up faster, I think it's possible in this demix, but in the original game, you could slide forward right after firing a noise crush to catch it immediately. Because what the game checked for in order to give you the charge state for Noise Crush was that it just made contact with you. It technically didn't need to reflect off a wall uh, because of this, but you needed to do a very fast and precise slide to do it. And that did make some boss fights easier if you did that technique. It just took a lot of practice to do consistently. Uh, but I'm not sure if the D-Make keeps that in. In fact, I don't really use Noise Crush too much because Shade Man's usually my last Robot Master to begin with. So, the gimmick of Wily 1 is darkness platforming. Again, my favorite. Uh, but at least this stage does it a bit interestingly in that we got rotating platforms sort of along the lines of Gutsman platforms where when they're on the solid rail, they are straight. But when they're not on the solid rail, they just spin haphazardly and you'll just fall off into the spikes of bottomless pits. But whenever you're on the floor from this screen on, this screen is dark but you can jump repeatedly to keep the lights on. So if anything, this is kind of an inverse darkness level where uh, you don't need to worry about the pacing, you just kind of need to keep an eye on what your actual surroundings are. It's one of the few darkness levels I've actually actively liked in any game ever. 
Compare that to, say, Ninja Gaiden 3, which I bring up a lot, and, uh, yeah, this, this is a lot better. Wily 1, in general, is made a lot easier if you have the Super Adapter. In fact, if you got the Super Adapter, period, the entire Wily Castle is not going to be that bad, especially also if you got Rush Jet, because it just allows you to do so many last-second saves with the Double Jump or anything like that. Although stuff like that can still happen and does to me a lot. <laughs> uh, I'd say overall the Wily Castle here in 7, D-Make or otherwise, isn't too bad in most of its stages. The bosses can be a little iffy here and there. Uh, in particular I'm thinking of the boss of Wily 3 and the final boss at the end of it all. Uh, but most of the isn't too bad. Uh, actually, what do I think is the hardest Wily Castle? Nines is up there, especially on a first run, but that's just so satisfying to run through smoothly after a few playthroughs. Ones is rough just because of it needing Magnet Beam and having just some very questionable level design choices. Two is also pretty rough just for what it does for some bosses. I do not fear you, Mega Man. You are too weak. Have at you. I skipped through that text a little too quickly. Hi, base. Base in this fight was actually more or less his tutorial fight from the intro stage in the original game. He jumps left and right, does a charge shot here and there, and fires. He's technically weak to Thunderbolt, I think, but as you can see, the, the Super Adapter's Rocket Punch does more than enough damage to be worth it. Uh, and if anything, it's technically safer because I can go from a distance. Ah, I'll be back. Guess I might as well go over bases bio, shouldn't I, huh? Uh, if memory serves... He's a robot that Dr. Wily has created to be like Mega Man. His final goal is to beat Mega Man. Good point. He's emulous, whatever that means. Bad point. He's as vain as a peacock. He likes champion. I'm assuming being the champion, and he dislikes weak robots. I'd like to note, uh, his like and dislike make a little more sense in uh, the Japanese text, where it is like legends of being the strongest, and he dislikes those who are stronger than him. The, the Mega Man base data is very hit or miss for what it's doing, sometimes is what I've noticed over the years. For now, though, it's time for the main boss fight of the stage, which is weak to Slash Claw, so get that out. But I'm not, because I'm about to die, probably, so I'm not gonna waste the weapon energy. It's Guts Man G! Uh, the intro, under uh, the mid-stage of the original game, uh, Wily steals what's left of Guts Man. Uh, and then here he is upgraded. The main thing this fight does is charge at you for mass damage and throw you up at a ceiling, which really hurts. But when it's not doing that, it's causing a little shockwave to cause a blocked paw that's slightly different part of the ceiling which he will then throw at you. But you can use Slash Claw on that to knock it into him for even more damage than the weakness itself usually does. This fight can be rough on a first run, but as soon as you get into the pattern of blocking him in a corner, it's pretty easy. Seriously, Wily, what's with the Guts Man love? Is it because he's iconic? Is it because he looks like a Metar? Metool? Whichever? What is it? What's up with that man? Feels like it's a long-running obsession. Alright, and now we're going into Wily 2. I can't remember which stage this is offhand. Wait, yes I do. This is the very green one, isn't it? Yes. Also, if memory serves, there's a transition coming up right here, because as with Mega Man and Limited and basically all the games I've done for the past several years, I record every stage individually, just so it's a separate recording file that I have locked in. Uh... And it's also for hard drive space reasons! Uh, because I don't like having several hour-long recordings that I can't tell what's in what. The only times I really do that is RPGs, for reasons. So this stage is another one that having the Super Adapter is pretty handy for, because it also allows you to take out enemies from a pretty good distance. Because the really good thing about it is the Rocket Punch is that it can also still go through walls just like the Mega Buster's been able to for several games, and I think that was still a thing in Mega Man 7. I think it's specifically like Mega Man 8 that it can no longer pierce through terrain for some reason. And also, this song has always reminded me of a certain Queen song. I, I, I don't know, I can't quite place why, but it, it does. In some regards, I guess this is my least favorite Wily stage in the game just because it's kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of mechanics from the other stages in ways that doesn't feel as good as some other times the series has done this. 
And I'll give it this, it has one kick-ass mid-boss. Ah, my wait is finally over. This time you shall fall. Come, Treble! Base now with his little doggy, has his own super adapter. And it is powerful, but it's also weak to our own because I think it's charge does about like four or five damage. Attack-wise, he's got his own homing punch you need to watch out for. It goes about a half screen distance. He'll charge across the floor and try to hit you, but he can also try to hit you if you jump over him when you do that. So he does a little bit of a U-turn at the end. And then he can jump in the air and fire three shots either on the rise or the fall. The first one of those is always a charge shot if memory serves. In the original game, there were platforms in this room for you to try to avoid him with, but they just removed those probably because it wasn't the most needed for the screen ratio change. Darn! How did I lose again? And there he goes. Notably, that was also a, a multiplayer option with a secret password in the original Super Nintendo game. And there is still a secret password here in the D-Make uh, that you get for beating the game. We'll see it at the end of the next part of Memory Serves. Uh, but what that does in this game is I think it sends you to the final level with all the weapons and all the items and like a maxed amount of weapon energy tanks and all those. So, you know, kind of just a uh, what if you mess up at the final boss kind of password even though you need to beat the game to know it. I don't know what Super Base is weak to otherwise, though, I should note. I've always just used Super Adapter, probably is his only actual weakness. And I might as well go over Treble, his little dog's, uh... Bio as well, shouldn't I? Uh, Treble, a wolf-type robot created to support Base. It can transform into an adapter, adapter and join with Base. Good point, Brood Instinct. Bad point, it's got a habit of biting. He likes girls, and he dislikes Rush and Tango. And I should, should know, that's one of the few bios I think I've ever seen where the text is basically identical in both regions. So, hey, you know what? I like Trouble. Consistent. Honestly, I don't know why. I've always really liked Bass. Like, I know he's technically not that many games, uh, because of season 7, 8, 10, uh, and Bass, and Bass 2. I think he was in Super Adventure Rockman and Rockman Strategy. Uh, and I'm not sure what else he was in besides that for classic games, at least. He's kind of limited, but he's always just been a strong character to me. I don't know why. I just like the rival characters, I think is what it comes down to. With that said, it's time for the boss, so get out wild, coil, sort of. Because it's time for Gamma Riser. This giant turtle will open its face and breathe fire at you, then slam the do a wall several times, which you can slide under to avoid. It's kind of a tricky placement, though. You need to kind of be towards the middle of the stage to do it to begin with. Every couple of attacks, it'll also eject its main body from the stage and send out a pattern of little turtles that can be numbered, I think, one through three. The mini turtles themselves are weak to Thunderbolt, uh, and the number dictates what attack pattern those little turtles are gonna do, but if they never get out, they never get to do that. I think one just walks forward and jumps, two, they spin around the room, and three, they bury themselves in the ground and resurface. He's weak to a charged wild coil, but I've also heard with good timing that Danger Wrap is technically the most damaging thing overall in this fight. Uh, I've just always gone with a Wild Coil strategy once I learned it. This fight is very pattern-based, but it can be very slow and it's very easy to take a lot of damage here, especially because that Fire Breath attack really hurts. I remember on our first run, though, this was definitely one of the bosses that took me the longest in this game and out of all the first 10 Mega Man period. Uh, like, it was up there with the original Yellow Devil, it was up there with Boo Beam Trap in Mega Man 2. Uh, this was a rough fight, and it still is, but at least I know the weakness and how it works now. And thankfully, Wild Coil also has a lot of ammo, so in case I die like that, I at least have backup options. Thankfully, the, the I think the little turtles are called like Spotteroses or something. Uh, they can also drop weapon energy, so if you're running low on weapon ammo, you don't need to worry too much about it. You just need to make sure, in case you're trying to farm them for that, that you kill them in such a place where you won't get stepped on by the main body of Gamma Riser on its way back down. Like, maybe let them get off the door. But, uh, oh well. This fight can be rough, but it's not the roughest fight in the game. If you can beat this, you'll probably be able to beat the rest of the Wily Castle, barring the obvious fight, pretty quickly. 
But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part four, we're gonna go finish off the game. See you guys then.